Nassim Haramon. And so it's an amazing, amazing realization. Mm. And you realize the opportunity you have and the role you have to play and the importance of your consciousness and your awareness and your feedback. So say that little voice is saying, ah, help me, or I'm in pain. How, so, say, so that's our feedback. We're able to say, okay, I, I hear that, that's the feedback. Now what about the feed forward? Right. So, so then you can start to engineer it. You can maybe say, well, what is the need? What, like, what's producing the little voice saying I'm in pain, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is the origin mm -hmm. of that little voice? Mm -hmm. And then you might find the origin, mm -hmm. you know, and then modify it. So that... And how do we modify it? Okay, well... You know, that's a good question. Um, I think it's through that feed forward. Right. Right. So, so uh, let's say that it's saying, ah, I'm in pain because, you know, this disc in my back or this cartilage or this or that mm. is not happy the way it is, right? Um, then you might be able to visualize a happy disc or a happy cartilage, mm -hmm. or a happy joint, a happy liver, mm -hmm. you know, and feed forward that information into the vacuum mm -hmm. so that the cellular structure has to now match right. because it's getting that feedback right. that that's how it should be. Right. And so, I, if people have a clearer understanding of what a disc looks like, mm -hmm. or how a spine, like how does the body actually function? Right. What is a healthy disc? Because you could just say it will be healthy, but you know, if that was the case, everyone would be fit and healthy. Right. Because <laughs> obviously not working. Right. So there's that finding the actual clarity in what the science actually is, like what is actually in here. That's right. Physically. And then for the little voices, you know, well, why is, why is the disc saying, I'm not happy, you know, and, you know, it's, there's, pause, but it, um, there's so much research of, you know, people having back pain, you know, it's, it's not correlated to people not being strong, in fact, you know, often the most strong people have more back pain, mm -hmm. but actually more unhappiness with their relationships or mm -hmm. unhappiness with their job mm -hmm. and so you know that's obviously one study and you know for me I like to take it out into all the branches of all of the pieces like what is what have been our feedbacks that we've been practicing throughout our whole life mm -hmm. you know this started mm -hmm. when you're conceived or more mm -hmm. you know you're practicing these patterns you're practicing these patterns and you're picking them up and learning about them and so that pinpoint of you know going in and finding like this thing like this is the knot of tension in the fabric of space-time mm -hmm. and then finding okay from this thing and this mm -hmm. thing and um, for me it's almost just like the observation mm -hmm. so I can observe it from here I can observe it from here I can observe it from here and then it's like wrong the communication can flow again right and then the healthy disc information can be reinstated reinstated so yeah very good points one you got to know what it's supposed to look like <laughs> right when it's healthy right right so that's good thing to learn you know the physiology you know the mechanics and and i would suggest that you might have to learn things that are not necessarily well known in the mainstream too because right. There's a lot you of know, things in the mainstream a, that are not well known or right. understood about the mechanics of the body. Right. Now, um, and you know, you might learn them from different venues and internally you might mm -hmm. find it yourself. But absolutely you're correct that most likely 
whatever you're suffering from has some relationship to certain emotional state, certain sets of information. So like, mm -hmm. let me take it out of this context for a minute mm -hmm. and talk maybe about time. Um, so what, what we're talking about has to do with the way the universe organized. Mm -hmm. In order for the universe to organize in the first place, it has to have a continuous evolutionary timeline. It can't be constantly forgetting what it just learned. Right. So when we say time or timeline or evolution, any of these concepts assumes memory. Like to make it more clear, if you didn't have memory, mm -hmm. if we didn't have memory, there would be no time. Mm -hmm. Right? No memory, no time. So if time is an evolution is a fundamental function of the universe and it seems to be that way we can see it on our own planet the evolution mm -hmm. from a monocellular system to the complexity that we see today um, then memory must be a fundamental principle of creation mm -hmm. not an epiphenomena of the brain right and actually you know when you know, uh, biologists look at the brain and, you know, uh, try to find the source of memory. They can't figure out where it is, right? <laughs> right? So, memory is most likely um, not inside the brain. The brain is just tuning in to a set of information that is embedded on the structure of space-time, meaning as you're moving through space, like for instance on the surface of our planet, your little body is moving through space, making a spiral through space, you're imprinting through your biological structure, and we could get into the complexity of the, the DNA and the microtubule and how it, that's done, but there's evidence that that's actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, that you're actually imprinting information on the structure of space-time and your um, timeline is a very specific determined timeline that nobody else occupies right. and so if there is trauma along that timeline that information is still there in the structure of the vacuum mm -hmm. and wherever you are now you still have access through that timeline to that information. And by changing your observation point on that information, you can change the geometry mm. of this information in space-time, which will have repercussions forward to your present time and repercussions backward to all your ancestry. And that's why I believe that we're discovering now the phenomenon of epigenetics. That mm -hmm. is, that genetics don't just stay the same, right. but they change depending on your state of emotion, mm -hmm. consciousness, and so on. So if we, as humans, remain in this state of... Um, Disease, let's say, you know, we have our pains, we have these emotional ties within the structure of space, and you know, within our physical body, we're experiencing it as pain and tension, you know, and mentally, you know, as the perspectives and the distortions that are, you know, challenging us, and then we have access to infinite energy, which is in the structure of space time. Mm -hmm. that you know with our, the new technology that how that is now becoming possible mm -hmm. what would happen if these two things met do you do you feel it would be safe or do you feel that it's important kind of part of our um, in order for us to be able to harness that energy that power for us to actually have seen that and, and become a master of that feedback loop and the self-healing so that we're not 
putting infinite energy into a discombobulated structure mm -hmm. which would blow it apart I mean if someone has shoulder tension and you like tell them to lift a little weight like mm -hmm. it's gonna make it worse right right I you know um, it definitely I think the universe is in some ways because it's a feedback mm -hmm. is kind of a fail-safe system mm -hmm. in which a system that's very discombobulated, discom discombobulated, discombobulated <laughs> or you know chaotic right. or you know um, disharmonious yeah. and because there's some confusion about the word chaos so I'd rather not use it um, I think you know as such a system typically is eliminated by nature you see it in nature and you, you know it doesn't maintain systems that don't function well right. that don't harmonize well for very long it, mm -hmm. it might sustain them for a while in the hope that that system kind of lines up with the rest right. and then if it doesn't it gets rid of it mm -hmm. and um, you know I think we're we're on that <laughs> that verge you know right. where nature is like right. either which way are we gonna yeah go? <laughs> which way are we gonna go right and and so and and in that moment uh, there is this amazing possibility meaning the technology and the understanding thing is here now mm -hmm. to give us infinite energy access to the stars you know like completely transform our society if we go that route I predict that within 10 to 15 years from now this society will not be recognizable meaning like mm -hmm. it's gonna look completely different mm -hmm. we'll have you know energy devices that produce as much as we want anywhere we want mm -hmm. gravitational drives mm -hmm. you know or uh, the system just doesn't make it mm -hmm. and um, we're in that moment and like you said it cannot like that choice can only be made towards this incredible possibility if the level of consciousness is there like the fact that these technologies mm -hmm. are actually emerging now mm -hmm. is a direct consequences of the consciousness rising to be able to meet that mm -hmm. So it's actually evidence that the, the consciousness is rising. And because even to have the you know belief enough that this is possible right. and for the support of society, financial and time wise and all this that people are actually spending time and resources to develop these devices and all this can only come if there's enough beliefs mm -hmm. and understanding that this is possible mm -hmm. for it to actually emerge. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it might emerge in some, you know, garage over there, mm -hmm. in the middle of Africa, in this village over there, right. you know, but it'll, it never makes it. Right. And that society just self-destruct before it can emerge mm -hmm. so this is that very fine line mm -hmm. that we're writing right now so every single individual that becomes a vacuum engineer mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. transform themselves and right. that starts to influence the vacuum at the larger yes. more powerful uh, capacity is making a huge difference huge difference mm -hmm. whether they're housewives or like president of countries mm -hmm. they're making a huge difference and you know and and it's critical at this time mm -hmm. it's critical every single person that pops their consciousness to that higher level of perspective of understanding of connectivity is making is like a little light that's adding up to all the other lights that are coming on right now mm -hmm. and it's like the dimmer is being turned on yeah and it's 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 a race between that and you know 
on the total destruction of our society. So it's critical. Yeah. And you might experience it in your own body. You know, I find people are very much challenged. People with great level of consciousness that have been on the path and that are aware and all this are being challenged right now mm -hmm. in their own body and you know their consciousness whatever because the whole morphogenic field is being challenged mm -hmm. so anything that doesn't belong is gonna have to go yeah so it's a very very critical moment so if there's anything you wanna what would be the message for us to leave people with? I think that that their participation is important that you know they might feel sometimes discouraged like that they you know they're like a little you know teeny thing and isolated mm -hmm. that they're they, they don't have an influence that they can't change the world you know they can't change themselves you know that's just not the case right they are connected mm -hmm. they are part of an incredible universal structure an incredible net that connects everything and you know their consciousness and their influence on the whole is critical and you know, and the universe is solely on their side. Right. You know, <laughs> it's totally like cheering them on, you know, giving them everything it can. Yes. To get, give them the tool to get the job done. Yes. So, you know, um, let's partnership with it. Let's go with the flow instead of against the flow <laughs> and um, and let's pop this um, let's pop this evolution to the next level and you know bring our society to a level of harmonious relationship with the universe with ourselves with each other that probably has never been seen right. it's an exciting time oh yes I'm very excited. Yeah, good. I am too. I, I'm very, you know, hopeful and very, you know, enthusiastic about our near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. This week I could keep talking for <laughs> infinite, but um, I think this is good. So thank you. Thank you. And. Um, yeah, meditate on that. <laughs> we'll see you out there in the vacuum. We'll see you in the vacuum.